hello and welcome back to the channel how we move the decibel in today's video we're continuing the series of I bought a ton of books and I don't know what to do with them I am NOT going to show you every time I list these books again because there's just so many of them but I wanted to show you periodically what it was like for me to list them now these I have photographed already I used the eBay um, photo tool, I guess is the best way to describe it. You can either look up the barcode on the back or you can look it up via image. A lot of these books don't have barcodes, so I was looking them up via image and then I was finding something that was similar and choosing cell similar. That's why a lot of this stuff is already filled in. Unfortunately, I'm having to go through and edit the photos I took. I took them on my phone and my phone is a Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus. <clears throat> Sorry, I just got a new phone. I had to think about it. I got a new phone because my old phone died. A very vicious, sad death. But it takes decent pictures. I'm still trying to get used to it. I haven't figured out all the bells and whistles yet. Um, so I just use the photo edit tool. Um, I take it on a white background, so it's easier for me to photo edit, easier for me to color correct because I know what color the background is supposed to be. But a lot of these went very wrong when I photo edited. They, they colored wrong, so I would not save those and I would just have slightly darker photos on those than using the color correct option or I would just use the brightening option. So with these, again, I did sell similar, which made it a lot quicker. Books I thought would sell for a lot don't sell for a lot and the books I thought wouldn't sell for a lot are actually the ones that may bring money in. So far, I think I've listed 50-ish books from this lot. A lot of the very vintage books are in a lot of bad shape, so they are pretty rough, The but I'm still going to sell them. If they don't sell in probably a year, I'm going to lot them all together in a junk journal lot because of the old artwork and stuff. I do think people would like to use this for crafting. Would I get as much money out of it as selling it as a singular book? No, I wouldn't. Would it get out of my house? Yes. Yes, it would. So I'm giving it a year, and after that I will just lot a vintage book crafter's lot and then sell that in bulk. The And people like to use them for decoupaging and junk journals, all of that stuff. So they do sell. I've done this before. I've also sold lots of 100% wool fabric that, like sweaters and stuff that have holes in them, I've sold as scrap lots, and people will also buy those. So yes, it happens. Uh, some of the stuff I've actually dismantled a couple books that were just beyond repair and started the like crafters lot, I guess, of papers. One was an atlas that was not vintage, but it was like from the 70s. And it was absolutely beyond repair. It was a well-used atlas. You could tell it was in somebody's garage or in, in their car. So I just uh, took that apart and will sell that as a crafter's lot. Also, sorry about my voice. It's, we don't know what season it is, time of year here in Illinois. It was over Easter weekend, 70 degrees. Today it's a high of 32 and it might snow. So my allergies are all over the place and I wanted to apologize for that. And I'm not using my microphone because my voice is such crap and I keep clearing my throat and stuff. And I know on my microphone that's really annoying and it's less annoying when I just use the computer microphone because it's not as, I don't know, it doesn't pick up as much, I guess would be the thing. The, ironically, only one thing has sold out of all the books we've listed and that one thing that has sold is a Dragon Ball Z PlayStation game that fell out of one of the cookbooks. So it wasn't even a computer, you know, it wasn't even a um, book that sold. Ironically, though, it did sell for $29.99 $29 plus shipping. 
So we've, with fees and stuff, we probably walked away with $25. So we've made $25 out of the $80 in a random computer game or a random PlayStation game that fell out of a book. That is also pro tip. Whenever you buy lots of books, especially uh, old cookbooks that people use a lot, old reference books, always flip the pages. Always, always, always. You don't know what you're going to find in there. So far, we found a dollar and a PlayStation game. Granted, the PlayStation game kind of fell out, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but we wouldn't have missed it. But the dollar we could have, and what if someone put more than a dollar? What if somebody, you know, essentially used books as banks? So that is my pro tip. Always, always, always check between the pages, flip through it. The... You know, it doesn't hurt anything if you're going to sell it anyway, but if it happens to have something in it, we did that with a couple of the books. Again, the only thing of value we found was a dollar in a game, but we did find like obituaries and personal notes and stuff in them that, you know, I don't feel good about selling those. So I take them out and discard them. The, but... Again, both these the person who owned these books must have cooked all the freaking time. All of the cookbooks are so heavily used. They have like grease stains on the pages, which is so I know people want brand new, but it, it I don't know, it kind of like a patina, I guess, to them. It I like it because I know that it was used in like some of the books. You could tell specific recipes that they used over and over and over again because those pages, like the books would just fall open to those pages or they were particularly just torn apart. This book here, all of the recipes are fine, but it is drastically yellowing. And the pages are like magazine pages. They're very thin and the, I, maybe that's why it was, yellowing so bad but it was it's pretty intense when it comes to the yellowing on it and I do want to make sure that shows up in pictures I do want to tell the buyer hey look at the pictures this book is pretty I won't say damaged it's not damaged not you can still see all the recipes all the pages are intact there's no rips or anything but it's yellowing it is aging you can tell it's aging this is me I just want to make sure it was a first edition it is as far as I can tell. So I was able to leave that in the listing. They only made one round of these. They, you know, didn't make a bunch because the next year was a different one. So I will list good. Again, the pages are not ripped, but I put in here, the pages are yellowing. Please refer to photos. And I will put it again in the description. Also, I don't know if what everyone's feelings are on AI and stuff. In my normal nine to five job, it can be harmful, but honestly, eBay, the AI descriptions, chef's kiss. It's made my life so much easier. That was one of the one things I was so bad at. I was horrible at writing descriptions for anything. And this made it so much better. It's so much fluffier. But like I've said in previous videos, anything that is very important, I always put on top of the AI description because it's fluffy. When the stuff I've ordered on, on eBay, if it has an AI description, I kind of skip over it. So I don't want people to skip over anything that's important. I do not put it at the end. I put it at the very, very beginning. And then I have the AI description because I want people to be very aware of what's going on. And I want to make sure that they've read it. Now, this book is not worth a lot, but it is freaking adorable. It is Walt Disney World's Mickey Mouse cookbook. And like all of the characters have their own recipes in there. Um, like gingerbread cookies and Wendy's I, I would say moist cookies uh, or no Wendy's molasses cookies so and like little John you know Sherwood Forest scrambled eggs it is adorable and if you were like planning a Disney trip with little kids this could be like one way to amp them up ahead of time it is just so cute they are very common recipes things we already know but just having that the vintage feel of it 
and all the old vintage artwork on it is so fun. I wish it was worth more. I feel sad that, you know, a lot of these were probably thrown away. Yes, the outside is rough. There was water damage somewhere, and I do make sure that I have pictures of water damage and make sure that in the description I am not overselling it. I would rather undersell things than oversell them. People are surprised and happy when you undersell. Am I going to get as much out of it? Probably not, but I'm going to be able to not get a return or not get an INAD, not, not get a customer that's not happy with it because of that. And that is worth it to me to have that happen than to go, oh gosh, you know, what if they didn't see that? So there is damage on the book. Please refer to photos. And I'll say that again on the description after I use the AI description. Honestly, though, this book is adorable and I can see if it doesn't sell me keeping it myself for personal use. It is just so cute. The And some of these books are so fun and some of them you're like, we can't cook with that anymore. The amount of recipes that use lard is kind of ridiculous. The probably unsafe cooking practices of some of the things and it's not like temperature or anything it's like we can't have an open flame in the house anymore things that you know were kosher in the 50s and 60s and 70s not as kosher anymore like lead paint so thank you for watching my video please like and subscribe and have a productive day